Yo, what's going on guys? It's in on mycology. Today I'm going to be showing you how to harvest, dehydrate, and initialize the second flush on your substrate cake. See here, I'm going to go ahead and start by harvesting each one of my mushrooms. Here I'm simply grabbing each mushroom at the base, twisting, and pulling until it comes up. This is a more effective way of harvesting your mushrooms, rather than using an X-Acto knife, because when using a knife or other sharp object, you tend to leave little chunks of mushroom behind at the end. These can sometimes rot and lead to further contamination of your substrate cake, which can negatively impact your yields for the future. Once your mushrooms are all picked, I like to go ahead and start by rinsing each one thoroughly. This is the problem that I was mentioning earlier. If you chose to use an X-Acto knife, you would avoid this step and you wouldn't really need to rinse them because you cut off most of where the substrate was. In my case, there's going to be a little bit on the ends, but this is no big deal as I can simply rinse it off. Once each mushroom is rinsed, I'm going to go ahead and commence the dehydrating phase. I always like to dehydrate my mushrooms for 10 hours, only because I usually soak my shoebox substrate cakes for about 10 hours, so both of these go for about the same amount of time and can run on the same timer. See here, I'm simply adding all of these. Make sure none of them are touching and they're all spaced apart. Go ahead and turn this on here. There we are. Now we're going to go ahead and start by initializing our second flush. You can see here, I'm simply waterlogging my tub with water. In this case, the substrate cake kind of stayed on the bottom in this video, but as it starts to rehydrate itself, it'll start to float up to the top. This is why I'm adding a second tub on top and filling it with water. So as that substrate cake tries to float up to the top, it'll go ahead and be pushed down by the pressure of this top tub. Alrighty. Once this is done and the 10 hours are up, before we take the mushrooms out of the dehydrator, I like to go ahead and start by putting this tub back into fruit. So after you've flushed it and rehydrated your cake, I go ahead and dump out the top tub and this tub. You can see I really strain this good here. I like to make sure I really fan this to get rid of any excess pooling water. Once this is done, go ahead and spray the top, put the lid back on, and put this back. In about 10 to 12 days, you'll have more fruits. And for the final phase, I'm going to be showing you guys how to store your mushrooms properly. As you can see here, I have the dehydrator. This is after about 10 hours. In case you guys were wondering, my dehydrator goes at 160 and most of them only have one preset, so I would just go on the 10 hour setting. And there's that big mushroom that I pulled out earlier. You can see here a lot of the mushrooms have lost most of their weight, and when you drop them they should feel almost like little light rocks. The reason for them losing so much of their weight is because 70% of mushrooms is water weight. So that means that if you feel your tubs and they're a little bit heavier, that means that they're only ever going to be 30% heavier than they were when you first put them into fruit, basically. It's kind of a weird concept, but it's very unique. Once this is done, I like to go ahead and make sure I'm checking each part of the um, dehydrator to make sure little chunks didn't fall down. Once I'm sure, I'll go ahead and put this down. And I'll start filling my jars. With these, I'm just using default 32 ounce mason jars. and You don't even need to mod it lids on these. I would recommend using a regular lid and dropping a couple silica packets in here is unnecessary. Make sure no extra water likes to log into these mushrooms. And there we are. That's everything guys. If you guys have gotten this far, it either means you're incredibly interested and invested in this process or you've successfully cultivated and dried your own mushrooms, so I really salute you. This is going to be the final episode in the series, but this doesn't mean I'm going to stop making videos. I'm going to continue to document and kind of research more topics regarding species inoculation and a lot of other things with agar. I'm probably going to make some more agar videos, but yeah, that's everything, guys. One thing I did want to mention is really try to be really considerate about making sure you dehydrate your mushrooms and feeling that they're cracker dry. When you squeeze a mushroom, it should basically crack open and break inside of your hand. It should, it should be very, very, very brittle, almost like a cracker. And that's what you want because otherwise, if it bends, it'll start to attract more moisture. And this can lead to your batch molding. I've had a couple of batches of mushrooms I've had just 
mold because they weren't dehydrated right and i really don't want you guys to go through this whole process just to get your mushrooms molded but if you're like me you already ate your first batch so <laughs> anyway guys this has been anal mycology and as always much love